Welcome back to another week in Bevy. This week we see some much needed documentation added to Assets V2, the base of generalized animations, and the ability to turn anti-aliasing on and off for UI. On top of that, there's a new compute shader-based asteroid generator, a fragment shader-based ray tracing example, and updates on a couple of games. First up, Bevy Assets. Bevy Assets, as well as Processing, both got some brand new, much needed documentation. Assets V2 is a high impact feature, but over the last few months, it's been suffering from a bit of a lack of shared knowledge. So this documentation is extremely welcome and needed. And Percentage Closer Soft Shadows are a technique from 2004 that allows shadows to become blurrier farther from the objects that cast them. 13497 introduces PCSS to Bevy, including wonderfully documented pull request and the code behind it. This is another great PR to read if you're interested in what changes to the rendering subsystems of Bevy looks like. A new 3D PCSS example is also introduced. And here you can see the difference between PCSS off, which has harsh shadows, and PCSS on, which has slightly blurrier ones. And in a great number of PRs, all components and resources got additional traits that they derive, like default, reflected. These were all by the same author and they're all linked from 15187, so head over to 15187 if you're interested in the deeper details. As a result of these PRs, the reflection information for all components and resources is much more fleshed out now than it was last week. Currently, there are default plugins, which is what most Bevy apps use when using various functionality, and minimal plugins, which are a set of plugins mostly useful for testing. As of 15260, there's now headless plugins, which is aimed at being more functional than minimal plugins and less functional than the default plugins, and mostly used on servers. In 15.169, the Rotation 2 APIs, or ROT2, got extended with the ability to specify rotation in terms of turns. A turn is a unit of angle measurement where approximately 90 degrees is one quarter of a turn. As of 15.170, anti-aliasing in UI can now be turned off using a new UI anti-alias component. This is useful for hard pixel, retro style game UI. And if you've been around a while, the entry API might be familiar to you, it's an idiomatic Rust convention that starts out with an entry call and provides a set of additional functions for manipulating the existing or non-existing values. For example, here's the entry API result on a hash map, which includes and modify, insert entry, and more. 15274 introduces a subset of those entry APIs for modifying or inserting component values. This means that after doing commands.entity on an entity, you can dot entry for a component type and modify or insert the default. Picking upstreaming continues this week with a variety of bug fixes in a variety of PRs. In closing out our PRs this week, 15207 sets the stage for the as yet unmerged generalized animation PR, 15282. 15207 is a deep PR, but has great comments, so it could be great to read it over for anybody interested in getting deeper into the ECS. This is performance sensitive code, relatively, and the changes are being made to support a specific feature. And a soft shout out for the Bevy Editor Prototypes repo, which has been seeing some activity, which we'll probably talk more about next week. And finally, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And that brings us to the showcases. We're gonna start off with AstroGen, which is a procedural asteroid generator in Bevy using compute shaders. The source code for this is available, as is a Windows executable release. Just hop on over to the GitHub. Next up, we've got Bevy Ray, which is a ray tracing in one weekend implementation done in a single fragment shader pass. There's some more work to do, but this is already pretty complete. And the implementation follows the ray tracing in one weekend book series, specifically ray tracing in one weekend, the first book. And in our next showcase, mesh particles using Bevy Hanabi, this demo showcases mesh particles, which are the smoke puffs in Bevy Hanabi, which is a GPU particle system. The PR for this one is already up, for upstreaming back into Bevy Hanabi, so hopefully we see it in a release soon. Rusty Lander pushed out a 0.2 release this week. The game is still a work in progress, and new work includes fonts and colors, as well as gameplay and UI. This showcase attempts to reproduce Warhammer Dark Omen in Bevy. The project has been in development for about six months, during which the developer has been slowly chipping away at the hard gameplay problems. And I always love a good small dev tool as Cargo and Rust really make it easy to create that just additional small bin for your project. This is a dev tool to test out different character combinations. While this showcases a fork of Bevy Editor Please, 
that allows the querying of hierarchy with, with, with filters. W is for the with component, X is for the without component, and I is for the entity index. In our next showcase, we've got some stick characters from Blender with poses. These noodles will eventually be replaced with human models. They're created in Blender using two blend files, one for the models and one for the animations. The poses and animations file uses single frame NLA tracks. And Hack RPG is an arena roguelike where the mission is to stay in an arena full of virtual enemies for 15 minutes. It's now on Steam in alpha. And our next demo shows off progress on this ray-marched fractal world with a number of different placeholder environment colors. If you like what you see, there's a couple of different examples, so definitely go check out the video. And from fractals to more image composing, this image composer is a prototype of a non-destructive node-based image composer. Features implemented include save, load, copy, paste, undo and redo, context menus, multi-select, camera controls like drag, pan, and zoom, port snapping, primitive property editing, and shape rasterization in a compute shader. While this 3D platformer added texture blending, which blends diffuse and normal maps, and shell texturing, which is used for moss and fur, especially on enemies. Last week we saw some conversion from marching cubes to fast surface nets, and this is the continuation of that work. Future work described by the author includes Wacom tablet-based sculpting, which already has a working Octa tablet slash bevy implementation and automatic decorating of the mesh. And up in our crates section this week, our first release, Bevy Map Camera, which is a 3D camera controller inspired by Google Maps, F4 Maps, and Changefinder. This is based upon Look Transform, Look Angles, and Orbital Camera Controller from Smooth Bevy Cameras. Bevy Light 2D saw its 0.4 release. Bevy Light 2D is a general purpose 2D lighting plugin. Its 0.4 release includes point light colors, which are now added to the ambient light instead of multiplied by it, as well as a number of bug fixes. You will need to migrate for this update, specifically adjust your point light intensities to account for the changes to ambient light. Our next crate is Bevy Advanced Decorum. Bevy Advanced Decorum is a window decoration plugin. Its first release includes customizable title bar transparency, toggleable window title visibility, as well as other controls. And finally, in our crate releases this week, we've got Lamex UI, the MVP, that is minimum viable product, as you can see here. This is an MVP for a new XML-based UI crate with hot reloadable workflows, as you can see here. And finally, we've got two educational posts this week. First off, we've got Retrofit Bevy Quick Start with Bevy Asset Loader, which covers the author's own experience replacing the Bevy Quick Start's asset loading with the Bevy Asset Loader crate. And secondly, what could be a painful lesson? Apply your transforms. Blender will happily let you scale, rotate, and perform other operations on your objects, which can result in unexpected output, especially if you're not using the entire scene and choosing to use a mesh inside of it. This post covers what that looks like and how to fix it. And that's it for this week. As always, we've got the full list of pull requests that were merged, issues, and PRs that were opened this week. So if you're looking to get involved, go take a look. A reminder that all of the links in the video are available on the website. The website is linked in the description and I will see you next week.